By early 1980, Phil and the various manifestations of Thin Lizzy had amassed ten albums, including Jailbreak, Bad Reputation, and the much-heralded Live and Dangerous. Singles included The Boys Are Back in Town, Dancing in the Moonlight, and Don't Believe a Word. Life was pretty good for the rock star legend, but maybe too conventional for his liking. So, why not settle down and marry the daughter of a British comedy legend? He managed to be able to cross all those divides, you know, you know, marrying Carol, the daughter of, uh, you know, Leslie Crowther. And you think, well, that's that's not what rock stars do, but he managed to be able to do it because he had that ladsish thing about him, not in a yobbish way, but in an incredibly likable way. He was such a, a lovely character, you know, devious but lovely. Friend and fellow musician, Huey Lewis. He was very close to all of his family's kids and mother and so on. And his extended family as well. I mean, he ran his band and crew as if it was family. He included me into his family. Well, I made a couple records with him in, in the Bahamas. And he would be so concerned about if everybody was taken care of and who was in there. And, you know, we'd be in the middle of the session spending studio time. And there would be a problem with uh, one of his kids, or he had to talk to his mom, or whatever. And I mean, everything would just go on hold, because uh, that was clearly his priority. When you came in my life, you changed my world, my Sarah. Everything seemed so right, my baby girl, my Sarah. And if the song that I write is no good Won't you listen to it please anyway And if the words that I write are misunderstood Won't you listen to them please anyway The song is for Kathleen Kathleen, Kathleen A beautiful girl Despite enjoying studio work, Phil Linet, all black leather and attitude, really came to life on stage. Just unparalleled as a performer. I mean, maybe the best hard rock performer I've ever seen. Once you plug into uh, an amplifier, it definitely gives you a pair of sensation. There's no point in having a fast car and not driving a fast. There's no point in having and a loud amplifier and not turning it up. And we have loud amplifiers. <laughs> never seen anybody command the stage like Philip Lennon. Fellow band member Major. It wasn't until we actually went out and kind of went on stage and, and started playing the set that I realised just how powerful this was. And having watched it as a fan, having seen Lizzie many times uh, from an audience perspective, you know, you, you could see Phil was the centre of attention, you know, the, the two other guitarists, whoever it happened to be, kind of vying for their, their bits and skipping around stage and doing whatever. Um, but Phil was always the central focus. But seeing it from on stage, you could feel Phil as the central focus. He held, he rooted the entire thing together. He could command the audience. He had them in the palm of his hand. In the same way that, you know, a Bono or, or whoever would, would be able to do it now, he had that magnetism, uh, that strength and that power, you know, to get audiences singing along and his, his little one liners. Is there anybody here with uh, any Irish in them? 
Is there any of the girls who'd like a little more Irish in them? You know, all of that stuff. He was just great at that. He had this roguish element that the girls loved, you know, and you could feel it oozing off stage. This is for all the cowboys here in Sydney. Any cowboys out there? I am just a cowboy Lonesome on the trail Starry night Come for light The coyote car Are you out there? The coyote call. And the howling winds will. So I'll ride out to the horse and down. From the Renegade Album Tour Support Act, Sweet Savage. Viv Campbell actually came out on stage with us one night. It was the last night of the tour, and uh, I remember that he he came out. He had a guitar around his neck, but it wasn't plugged into anything. And um, it was typical end of tour uh, hijinks stuff. And he came out and he pulled the cable out of my guitar and plugged it into his guitar and started playing. And I looked at him pretty incredulously for about a second, and then I grabbed the cable back out of his guitar and put it back into mine. And I, I kind of think that he respected that, you know, as, as a musician, <laughs> that it, it didn't matter to me who he was, you know, even though I was in awe of this big rock star, you know, he was still screwing with my gig and I wasn't about to let him do it. So anyway, he, he very graciously finished out the rest of the song um, miming, you know, not that he had any idea of how to play any of our songs anyway. Stiff Little Fingers, Jack Burns. I think the best word to use to describe Phil as a live performer was charismatic. I mean, you just couldn't take your eyes off the guy. You know, that's what set him apart from the majority of, of Irish musicians up to that point. Uh, you know, we'd always come across as earnest and honest. I'm thinking of people like sort of, you know, Val Morrison and Rory Gallagher and people like that. But there was never any show business flash or anything like that, like, you know, uh, associated with either of those. Uh, artists, but uh, but Phil was all about it. I mean, he really was the first proper rock star from Ireland. You know, I mean, he really knew how to work a crowd. Death Leopards, Joe Elliott. It was the black leather trousers, the black jacket, the bass, the fact that he used to bounce the mirror ball light off his silver scratch plate. Well, you know, just these little things. You've got to remember that back in the late mid to late seventies, this was still the kind of arse end of glam rock, and. The punk thing, it happened for certain people. I think Lizzie kind of carried through the two. I think a lot of punks respected Lizzie because they, they, they weren't an overblown, fat, bloated rock band. They were hardworking, skinny, and they meant it. Um, yeah, they may be a bit more musical than, than punk bands would have liked, but um, they, they, I think they carried that through. And the showmanship was a big part of what they did and rolled over into bands like us, maybe, and even Maiden. Because Maiden with twin guitar lineup, it was a complete sort of shoe in to do uh, Thin Lizzy covers because obviously so much of what the guitarists do was based on what Lizzy did. And in effect, I mean, there had been other bands that had done it before. I mean, you look at like, you know, the Allman Brothers Band and things like that. But Lizzy was somehow different. It was different in that it played catchy guitar melodies that didn't sound like they were retreads from country music and at the same time there were bands like say wishbone ash and stuff like that which did kind of get towards what lizzie were doing but they didn't rock <laughs> like lizzie did that was the thing Uh, it's quite surprising that they never ever made it in the States. Perhaps, I don't know whether it was, you know, difficulties coming to terms with the fact that, you know, Phil was a black Irishman. Yeah. 